Why is it that everybody seems to hate us? What's going on everybody? Sean Pierce Johnson here, and I have just one question to ask. Why is it that everybody seems to be hating on Gibson guitars so much recently? A couple weeks ago, it didn't matter what form of social media I was on. Facebook, Instagram, even YouTube. The Guitar Gear News was all pointed to the 2017 release of the Gibson Les Paul Standard, which you see right here. Now, at face value, this picture really doesn't look all that bad. It's a fine looking guitar. But if you look really close, you can see a noticeable ding on the back of the guitar. It was amazing to me the shitstorm that this picture seemed to rile up in people. But it quickly morphed from being about the one picture to being about Gibson guitars and the company in general. So I did a little bit of journalistic digging, if you will, and came to the conclusion that there are three things that people really seem to lump on Gibson guitars. Those three factors seem to be poor quality control, insane design choices, and the people at the top of the company. Let's take a look at these things. First, the poor quality control. Over the last couple years, it seems that people have been having less than favorable experiences with Gibson guitars in the store. Now, of course, you could chalk that up to just the stores not doing their job and taking care of the instruments, but I have to say, when a guitar company puts a guitar into the store, they would want the best possible example, am I correct? So, is this necessarily something that Gibson can control? Yes, of course, QC is paramount in retail. You have to be sure that you're putting the best possible quality product out there. But I find it really interesting that people are experiencing this in such a short amount of time. I know as an owner of three different Gibson guitars that I tend to like them. And even my experiences playing the more high-end models have been pretty favorable. And even playing some of the Epiphones, I can't complain. So it's kind of like, well, are these just bad apples that spoil the bunch? Maybe so. Now, when it comes to some of those weird design choices that Gibson made back, oh, for Les Paul's 100th birthday, I can definitely look back on them and say, why? Some of my experiences playing those guitars were less than favorable. The necks just didn't really feel like a Les Paul neck. They felt like something more geared towards a modern guitar player. Wider necks, flatter fingerboards, definitely not your traditional Gibson. But that's something that you have to give Gibson credit for. They're trying to figure out what is going to attract the modern guitar player. More modern guitar players tend to like flatter fingerboards, so maybe they were just trying to test something out. This is no different than, say, Fender toying around with maple and rosewood on fingerboards, and heck, they're even switching from rosewood to Pau Ferro because of the new sights regulations. Guitar companies, no matter what they are, no matter the brand, they're gonna make different design choices, and they're not always going to be as well received. Lastly, the corporate structure of Gibson really seems to be getting people in an uproar. I know personally, reading some interviews with Henry, his name's right there, uh, he definitely doesn't come across like the kind of guy that gets guitar. He kind of looks at Gibson as more of a consumer electronics, which is evident in that earlier this year, Gibson showed off their modern double cut at the CES show in Vegas a mere two weeks before the Winter NAM show. And when I went to the Winter NAM show, that guitar was nowhere to be seen in the Gibson room. So what's up with that? Having said all this, I want to say that I am a fan of Gibson guitars. I own three of them. As a matter of fact, you often see me reach for this guitar for most of my demo work when it comes to pedals or amplifiers. I enjoy the feel of it. I enjoy the sound of it. And in the 10 plus years that I have had it, I have acquired two more Les Pauls that I enjoy equally as much. I know people that work for Gibson, and they are very passionate about music passionate about guitar. They're generally passionate people and good people to be around and among some of my favorite people in the musical instrument industry. It's amazing to me what a small mistake like that can do for a company like Gibson. Take the public perception and flip it completely upside down. But I'm not going to make excuses for Gibson. It was a mistake. But that could very well be a chain of communication where there's just one small breakdown. And of the guitars released for 2017, it's just one picture, it's not the entire line. Could be that that was the only example that they had to photograph that day. Could be that maybe the photographer or the photo editor or the webmaster 
might need to wear glasses and just didn't notice it. It's a small mistake. I don't really feel like it reflects on the company as a whole, but I suppose that's the straw that broke the camel's back for certain people. Personally, it doesn't matter to me a picture on a website. You see the front of a guitar, you see the back of a guitar, and for a guitar like it's been around for 50 years like the Les Paul, do you really need to know what the front and the back looks like? You know what it looks like. So go pick one up in the store and play it for yourself. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many nicks, cuts, bruises, and blemishes that a guitar has, you can still play the darn thing and make music with it. In fact, if you find that guitar in the shop, you might even be able to talk the salesman down a few hundred dollars to save some money. So am I a Gibson fanboy? Sure, I like the guitars I had, but they were made 10 plus years ago. Not exactly a fan of some of the more recent design choices because, quite frankly, they're not traditional and they're not to my taste. But that's the interesting thing about music. It's a constantly evolving business where tastes shift with the time. So companies like Gibson, like Fender, like Paul Reed Smith, like Schecter, ESP, Ibanez, et al. They're all trying to figure out what guitar players want at that point in time. It's kind of like, why do they release a new model of car every year with small little tweaks from the previous year? It's because they're trying to figure out what the consumer wants at that moment in time. Sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. That's business. To sum it all up, I really feel like this is just a case of misplaced hatred. It's really a small thing, but for a lot of people, it is the straw that broke the camel's back which I can understand. But for my part, I'm still going to enjoy playing the Gibsons that I own and checking out new guitars from them in the future. Now I wanna know what you guys think. Do you feel like some of this Gibson hatred is a little misplaced or do you subscribe to some of that hatred? Let me know what you think in the comments below and be sure you click the subscribe button when you see it so you don't miss the rest of the videos that I've got coming up. Until next time, my friends, I'm Sean Pierce Johnson and I wish you all great tone and happy stomping. Cheers.